Fed Chairman Jerome Powell held a press conference at the annual Jackson Hole Economic Conference today, and he all but said that a September cut to the federal funds rate is a done deal. Quote, the time has come for policy to adjust. The direction of travel is clear, unquote. Naturally, he threw in the usual propaganda phrases about how the Fed is data-driven. He continues, quote, the timing and pace of rate cuts will depend on incoming data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risks, unquote. Remember, with its official statements, the Fed is always careful to try and give the impression that it is not a political organization and responds only to economic data. But for whatever reason, Powell and the Fed have now decided official CPI inflation is low enough for the central bank to get away with new infusions of easy money, even as stocks, rents, home prices, and food prices are all at record highs. On price inflation, Powell all but says, mission accomplished. Quote, with an appropriate dialing back of policy restraint, there is a good reason to think that the economy will get back to 2% inflation while maintaining a strong labor market. Unquote. So in addition to declaring victory over rising prices, even though last month's official CPI growth was still nearly 3%, Powell is again pushing the myth of the soft landing, even though there's absolutely no reason to believe the Fed can engineer such a thing. In fact, if anything, the fact that the Fed now signals it wants to start cutting rates is one of the strongest recession signals we can get. If we look back at the relationship between rate cuts and recessions, we see that in almost every case that recessions begin shortly after the Fed starts a cycle of rate cuts. The Fed started cutting the Fed funds rate in 1989. Then we got the recession of the early 1990s. In late 2000, the Fed started the rate cuts again. We got a recession in 2001. The Fed did it again in late 2007. The recession began in December 2007, followed by a financial crisis several months after that. This relationship even holds for the 2020 recession, because even without COVID, there would have been a recession in late 2020. The Fed had begun to ease the target rate in summer 2019. There was no soft landing in any of these cases, even though it had been routine for the Fed to promise a soft landing at least as early as 2001. But it all makes sense because the Fed usually gets dovish about monetary policy in response to fears about impending recessions. The Fed has no special prediction skills, so it sees what the rest of us see, a weakening economy, and the Fed is now trying to prevent a recession by flooding the economy with more easy money. This is what the Fed has been doing over and over for decades. Unfortunately, if the Fed steps on the money creation accelerator now, that's only going to guarantee today's high prices stay high, and all during a period of rising unemployment. So why is the Fed doing this now? The answer is politics. Maybe the Fed wants to give a shot in the arm to markets right before an election. Or maybe the Fed is caving to pressure to force back down interest rates on the massive federal debt. In any case, we can be sure the Fed's decision definitely isn't based on any sort of sound economic theory. And regular people should probably be prepared for either rising prices or rising unemployment, or maybe even both. <laughs>